Hello, welcome back to my channel. This video is about illustrating stresses on a pressure vessel or a tank, such as the spherical pressure vessel that is depicted here. I'm reusing this image that has been shared with the internet by others. You can see the citation down here. Um, and it's a Creative Commons license, meaning that it's okay for to me to remix and reshare this with you. All right, what we'd like to do with this pressure vessel is store propane at 150 psi. We use that lowercase p to show pressure. PSI, of course, is pounds per square inch. And um, for our purposes, we don't ever this is, I mean, this is a gauge pressure. This is a gauge pressure. We do not factor atmospheric pressure typically into these calculations for these purposes. The method that we are using is an approximate method. And um, it is conventional to just use the gauge pressure on these types of problems. Uh, we're given that the outside diameter of the tank is four feet. And we're given that the wall thickness is 0 0.2 inches. So I could draw a cross section through this tank. It's got a very, very thin wall relative to its geometry. We would definitely characterize it as a thin walled pressure vessel because of that aspect ratio. And let's do this kind of thing. So from the center to the outer fiber, that's gonna be half of our outer diameter. So that's gonna be two feet or 24 inches from the center of the sphere to the outer surface of the tank. Our wall thickness is 0 0.2 inches. So my inside, dimension is going to be 24 minus 0 0.2 equals 23.8 inches. So we could think of this as like our outer radius and as our inner radius. And for all of the pressure vessel problems, we are going to use the mid depth radius that's defined as R. We can either average these two values or by inspection, like we want to measure from the center to the fiber that's halfway between the inner wall and the outer wall. And so that is how we're going to define the mid depth radius R. And so that's going to be 23.9 inches for this problem. How am I getting that? I'm just taking my inner radius, 23.8. I'm adding in half of the thickness of the wall, 0 0.2. You get the same conclusion if you started with the outer radius, 24 inches, and then subtracted out half of the thickness of the wall. Either way, you'll get a mid-depth radius of 23.9. OK, so we've got 150 PSI of gauge pressure. We have a mid-depth radius of 23.9 inches. And we are asked to illustrate the state of stress at point A on a two-dimensional stress element. And when you're asked to do this, there's a couple things you'll want to do. You'll want to compute all the stresses, right? We don't want to just show these symbolically. So we want to compute them, we want to label them, and we want to be sure to include axes. As you see over in the picture, we do have a Cartesian coordinate system set up. So we have X running left to right, Y going straight up, Z coming out of the page or out of the screen toward you. And all of that is, is intended to define the geometry at this one point on the surface, this one point on the surface that we're calling point A. We could think of that as a point in space, but it's also common, as I've got in the drawing, to kind of think of that as a surface membrane at that point. We know from the theory that spherical pressure vessels are subjected to 
tensile stress. Spherical pressure vessels are subjected to tensile stress in the plane that is at a tangent to the curvature of the tank at that point. So if we look at the graphic here, we see that the x, y coordinate system has been set up so that it defines the plane that is tangent to the curvature of the tank at point A. So as part of our answer, we want to be sure to show those um, axes as part of our solution. Okay, now that we've got that established, we know we're going to get tensile stresses with respect to the x direction and the y direction. And now we just need to compute the magnitude of those stresses. We'll use our equation. Stress is equal to PR over 2T. We derived that in class together. And now we really just need to plug things in. Do watch the units. Let's do pounds per square inch of pressure. My mid depth radius is 23.9 inches. In the denominator, we have the two. And then we have the thickness of the tank, which is given as 0 0.2 inches. As always, check your units. We can cross out those inches and those inches right away. And we're going to get this answer in PSI. That works out to be 8.963 E3 PSI. But that would not be a conventional way to express stress. So we are going to take E3 PSI, turn that into KSI, and condense this down to three sig figs in our final answer. So we're going to get 8.96 KSI of tension at point A, and that tensile stress acts in the x direction, as well as the y direction because we have a spherical pressure vessel. Okay, sometimes I get a question. So this is, this is a correct solution here. However, could we do this? Could we do this? What if I made my x direction, so there's point A, what if I made my x direction go this way, my y direction go this way, there is a right angle right there, and my z is still coming out of the page, so my z direction hasn't changed at all. Well, you could do that analysis, and in that coordinate system, you would also have the same stresses. You'd still have that 8.96 KSI in these directions. And so there's um, multiple ways to set up these coordinate systems. The key is, is that you're setting up two axes, X and Y, that are at a tangent to the surface of the curvature at a particular point in space. Let's go through our little checklist. Did we do everything we were asked to do? Two-dimensional stress element, check. Did we compute the stresses? Check. Did we label them? Yes. So we're essentially adding these labeled numbers into the picture. Did we include the axes? Yes. Do we have to double label? Do I need to also label this one as 8.96 KSI? And the answer is no. Anyone who speaks the language of solid mechanics knows that this arrow and this arrow, those two stress vectors are telling us the stress is 8.96 KSI. You don't need to double label. It's okay for these two to just hang out without labels on them. 
that is the end of this video. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day.